God and tell him thank you for my life, thank you for my mind, thank you for everything. Just worship the Lord and tell him, God, I depend on you. Today, oh Lord, may you speak to my heart. May you speak to me. May you lift me up from where I am. That I may be a different person, oh God. I surrender to you. I focus on you. And I, I, I give all the glory and all the praise to you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, Jehovah God. Thank you, Lord. We worship you and we bless you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed and we have believed. Amen. Give God a hand clap of prayer. A nice clap unto the Lord. For the next 30 seconds, you're clapping your hands. Until they become hot. I add you 30 more seconds. They clap, 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 clap unto the Lord. The Lord of Lords and the King of Kings deserves all the praise. Amen. You can have your seats in the presence of God. And, and appreciate my team. This will be great musicians, I, I can assure you. <laughs> but I like the confidence. Praise God. I like that confidence. God bless you. Now, I, I am going to share with you a word that is in Philippians. Um, that is um, Philippians 4, 11 uh, to 13. Where we say I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. But before then, I want to share with you a story. And that story has been of great help to me. In 1988, where were you in 1988? 1988. There's something that happened in the history of the world. And that is the Armenian earthquake. In a matter of 20 seconds. 20 seconds. Um, an earthquake of the magnitude of 6.8. And with an effect of 5 meter underground hit that country. And in the next four minutes, a lot happened. A lot happened. Buildings fell. Roads were wrapped up. Everything was up and down. And, and it was a devastating moment. And as I share this story, I want you to know that we are not sure of the future. We don't know what is going to happen. But the only confidence that we have is that God is with us. That is the only confidence you have. You cannot tell that we shall be here in the next 10 minutes. The only thing that we are sure of is that God is with us. And whether the future brings a high or a low, He is going to be with us. Now, when that earthquake happened, there is one man, and that man is celebrated everywhere. When he saw what had happened, he survived. Him and his wife survived. And when he ensured the safety of the wife, he thought of his boy who was in school at that time. <clears throat> he was in school and wondered, could he be there or not? And so he rushed to the school. At the entrance, he saw that every building was down. The place where the class was, was just rumble. Nothing, no activity, nothing. But the rescue team had arrived before him, and they had declared that no one has survived. They cannot hear any voices. They cannot continue with the rescue because this is like everything has been destroyed. But this man refused to believe. When he looked at the devastation, he refused to believe that his son was dead. He said, my son is alive. Praise God. This is the attitude you will have. When you meet difficulties, you must, at the, at the beginning, declare what you want to see. Say your son is alive. He's there. Whether he's born or not, he's alive. Can you say my son is alive? My son is alive. Okay, a simpler one. Say, I am, okay. I am okay. Say, I'm okay. I am okay. I'm okay. Look at your neighbor and tell them, I'm okay. Come on, Kale, we say, I'm okay. I'm okay. Praise God. Now, when he said 
that my son is alive. Of course, the parents who had come along were crying. Some of them were rolling on the ground. Oh God, why did you allow? Why did you allow? Why was I giving birth to this child and then you finish him in this kind of a thing? They were crying all over the place. But he refused to join the bandwagon. He refused to join them. He said that I must get my son because he had promised his son that no matter what happened, what happens, I will be there for you. No matter what happens, I will be there for, for you. And he thought about it. He thought about it. Am I there? Am I there for my child? And immediately an energy rose from within him and he said, Now the rescue team seems like they have rested. But I shall not. He traced where the class was, where the classroom was, and started pulling the rumble, the stones by his bare hands. Of course, everybody thought that this is now a case of a head that is not okay because what are you looking for in such a place? Most of the times, you will not get the motivation you want from your friends. You will not get it. You will not get the motivation you need from your friends. Sometimes when you look at them and how they have given up, it's like you also want to give up. But I don't want you to be that kind of a person. Turn to the person next to you and tell them, don't, don't be kind of, tell them in the language you can, don't be the kind of a person who back up, who give up, who, who withdraw, who withdraw um, uh, before finishing. And I, I mean, don't be like that. Don't be like that. Tell somebody like that. Usiwe mtu kama huyo ambaye akitishwa kidogo hivi akitishwa kidogo hivi anaondoka. Now this one um, decided that he would rem uh, remove the rumble by his own hands. <coughs> and he went on. He went on removing. At some point in the sixth hour mikono yake ilikuwa kama damu peke yake. It was like flesh. But at that time something happened. He saw a place in the rumble where a slab had not been broken. And uh, he got motivated that this may have preserved some people underground. And true to it, he asked for help. And when that thing was moved, it created a ray of light down under. And when the children who were stuck somewhere down saw a, lay, a, a ray of light, a man, his son, was among the survivors, but was underground, said, Dad, so you have come for me. You've come for me. And this attracted the attention of everyone. And they started now working very hard. And he shouted back at the son, What did I promise you? I shall be there for? I shall be there for who? For you. And... Uh, they found the boys in that class had uh, had, uh, had sat somewhere and a man had caused them to be orderly because he had told the boys that his father would come for, for him. He had believed in the promise of the father and for sure it came to pass because they got them there and they were saved. There was a great celebration. But more so to the courage of a father who followed up his promise. And a son who believed in the promise. <laughs> Getting back to the scripture that we are reading this morning. That I can do all things through Christ to strengthen me. It is in Philippians 4, 11 to 13. I start with 12 which says this. I know both how to be abased. And I know how to abound everywhere and in all things. I am instructed both to full and to be hungry. To be full and to be hungry. Both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Now, I want you to think about your life. And the promise of God that he has given you. One of the promises of God is that I shall be with you. That means in, in the night he shall be with you. In the morning he shall be with you. When you have money, he shall be with you. 
when you don't know what to do, God will be with you. That is, that is his promise. The other promise is that I love you with an unconditional love. There are many scriptures that point to that. That we are loved by God in an unconditional love. A love that has no, that has no limit. So you know that whatever you face, there is one person who loves you. And that is God. He loves you. He loves you. That is his promise. So you can hang on it like this son who waited on the father for a long time. And indeed, the two connected. Say after me, deep calls to deep. Uh, many people are asleep. Deep calls to deep. Deep calls to deep. That means a positive attitude and another positive attitude somewhere, they connect at a place. When somebody sets out to seek God, God also is excited to open up his hands and receive that person. When you take that step, and I encourage you to take a step in that situation that you are going through. When you believe in God and take the promise he has, taken, uh, he has given you and move that direction, something is going to happen. Praise God. Something is going to happen. Something good is going to happen. When you see those pictures on the internet of the father uniting with the son, standing on top of a rumble, you just know that the promises... Now, when you think about the promises of God, you know that the promises of God are yes and, and amen. The promises of God are yes and amen. I want you now, just before I finish, um, we will talk for half a minute. Look at somebody, look at somebody. Just look at somebody. I'll tell you what to tell them. Just look at them. Look at somebody. Look at somebody. Are you looking at somebody? Look at somebody. Don't look at me. Uh, ask them this. What has God promised you? And let them answer you. What has God promised you? Let them answer you. And let nobody say nothing unless you are very ignorant. God has promised you many things. Let people talk. Now take the conversation to the next level. Tell them what he has promised. He is going to fulfill it. And don't lie. Don't say God has promised that I will marry you. No, no, no. Hiyo ni yako. Especially if you can pick a promise from his word and hold on it. God has promised he's faithful he's going to fulfill it. So today as we pray, it's a moment of receiving the promises of God. The promise of his love. The promise of his goodness that never ends. That's what we do this morning. So I want you to bow your head and as you remember the love of God, the promises of God this morning. I want you to know that he is good. He is so faithful. He is so wonderful. He is so amazing that he has promised to love you in your state. The Bible says in Romans 5, 8 that when we were sinners, he died for us. When we were sinners, to live for by a son. But he died for us. So his love extends and comes to where we are this morning. Father, I thank you for the promises that you have promised us, O oh Lord. That if we call on you, you shall answer us and show us great and unsearchable things. Thank you, Lord, because your promises are real. Thank you because your promises are true. And we hold on your promises. Yes, your promises are yes and amen. They are yes and amen. And we trust in you, O oh God, that, O oh Lord, what you have promised, you bring it to, uh, to, to, to completion. And this morning, O oh God, there is somebody who is trusting you, O oh Lord, for the peace of their mind. And you have promised that peace I give to you, not as the world gives. Peace that surpasses understanding be unto you. I want you to receive the blessing of peace right now. Say with your mouth, I receive your peace, Lord. I receive your peace in this situation. People are going through hard things. But I want you to receive the peace of God. 
Jesus was walking on the water. And he came across the disciples who were so worried. He talked to the storm and told the storm, peace be still. And for sure, the storm still. I speak to every storm in your life. Let it become in the name of Jesus. I speak to every situation that is stealing your peace. Let it become right now. At the entrance of this information, let calmness come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare the peace of God. I declare the peace of God upon you in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for your financial breakthrough. This is something that you trust God for. The Lord says that he died so that instead of you becoming poor, he became poor so that you might become rich. And I want you to know that you are rich because of Christ. But there are limitations that stand on your way that make you not get where you want to go. I want you to see that God is inviting you to another level of finances. Another level, not where you are, but another level of financial breakthroughs. Some of them you'll work for them, and others you will not have to work for them. But God is gracious because he has promised he will fulfill his promise. I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Let there be a way. That will bring financial breakthrough to you. Let a way be created in the name of Jesus Christ. And I want to pray for those who are not feeling well right now. And, and you, you, you feel like you're let down. You're left behind. But I want to say that by the stripes of Jesus, another promise of God. By the stripes of Jesus, we have been healed. First Peter 2.24, by the stripes of Jesus, we have been healed. I want you to receive the healing of God today. I want you to say, God, I receive your healing. Believe God as I make this prayer that something is going to happen to your bones. Something is going to happen to your blood flow. Something is going to happen to your sensory, uh, sensory I mean, I mean uh, nervous system and any other system in your body that is not working right. In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, I declare healing upon you in the name of Jesus. Right from your head to the toe, let it flow. Let it flow right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. I want to pray for those who would like to receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. Maybe you have considered to um, let the Lord be your Lord and be your Savior. I want you to raise up your hand. I'm going to pray with you to receive the Lord as your Savior. It is the most important decision that anyone can make. And you have the chance right now to make that decision and say, Lord Jesus, I receive you. I allow you now to be my Lord and Savior. If you're that kind of a person, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for loving me just as I am. I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Take control over my heart. Take control of my life. I'm all yours. I believe in you. That you died, rose again. Now seated at the right hand of God. Thank you for saving me. If you have made such kind of a prayer, you will see me after the service. And we will uh, conclude it. But I want everyone now, raise up your hand. Everyone, I want to speak the blessing of God upon you. In the name of Jesus, raise up your hand. You're not raising your hand to me, you're raising up to God. I declare upon your life safety, safety, safety to you in the name of Jesus. Let every snare of the devil be destroyed. Let every snare of Satan be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Let every trap that is set for you now be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let everything that the devil has hidden in the darkness not touch you in the name of Jesus. It shall fail in the name of Jesus Christ. Anything started by Satan, I command it to crumble now over your life. As you're raising up your hand, help is coming to you. Let help enter you. Let help come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare upon your life, no plague, 
shall survive in your body in the name of Jesus. The Lord shall save you from the plague that destroys the midday. A thousand may fall at your side, ten thousand at your right, but none of these evils shall come near your tent. For he shall command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways, that your feet shall not strike against a stone in the name of Jesus. Upon you I declare long life long life in the name of Jesus long life upon you in the name of Jesus any situation that would shorten your life I command your situation be removed from this dear ones in the name of Jesus I declare the power of God now arranging your life in the name of Jesus I have prayed and believed amen put your hands down and celebrate the Lord with the hands of God.